Okay. All right. Welcome, guys. So we're going to start um, automation with Selenium using Cucumber, and also we're going to make sure we do like end to end today. So it's not we are not going to be using page objects, but it's going to be like kind of traditional end to end Selenium with um, Java and using Cucumber for this particular training. So and let's see how we go through from one step to the other. So of course we're using Maven also. So let's create a new project. New project. So we're using Maven. So I will just continue from there. So let's say we're using com dot my test sites. So my first test. So and I would click on continue and finish. So I want a new window opened. Okay, that is my okay. That's my project opened. Then let's see what we have in the structure. I've got my pawn which is already open right now. It's kind of a standard font folder. So it's got my group ID, my artifact ID, the one I just entered right now, and also the version. So everything is set up for you like that. So, and then also in the SRC, you have your main and your test. So in your main, you have Java and resource. In your test, you have only Java. So like I said, I need to emphasize this, your test, leaves a test, not at main. Don't put your test in in the main folder. It, uh, this is where the developer code goes in. But as a tester, you put your test in the test folder. So it goes into test does Java. So that's where you put your test in. So now there are a lot of things that we need to do also, which work is on the website that I'm putting up right now. The first one is your pawn, right? We want to update our pawn with the right one that we've done in the previous class. So I click on, on that pawn to copy the content of what I want, So, which we already had before. So I want to copy from the, I want to copy the dependencies for every um, dependency that we're going to use. So I copy everything up to project, so I leave the project out. So then I go into my test. So then I paste it at this level. So that is everything in there. So because I've done this before, so you are you are not seeing any red. So but in most cases you'll be seeing the version in red. So after you've done this, you need to import changes in normal scenario. If you're doing this for the first time, you click on import changes and that should st start to download the dependencies for you. So, and after that, you need to go into view, windows, and Maven project to get your Maven window if it's not, uh, already displayed. If it's already displayed, you don't need to do that process. So I can refresh to see then, and then you go to life cycle. You can go to life cycle and do a clean. So, and that should clean without any error. So that is is for set so everything is fine no error message so then the next one is our test engine so what we need to do is need to create a new that's on the so don't put with we are not putting it at this level so we are putting our test engine at the package levels of um, project level so 
I click on that and I click on new or even better so that it doesn't confuse you I can right click from there and say new and I want to create a new file or oh, it's an XML file anyway so back and say file I want to say test ng dot xml so that is my test ng created so the next one I want to copy the test ng from the one that we did before so so that is the sample test ng that we did before so you want to copy that and just copy test ng so then you want to paste it in the location so now it's showing red because one we haven't got our runner and we haven't got our yeah test runner um, already configured so what we need to do now we need to create a um, package called runner so I copy that so I go into my SRC my test and in Java I want to create a package called runner so paste that is runners so okay that is done so going to that also in this level of the package I want to create a class called test runner so right click on that one new I want to do a class and I call that test runner so that is done so that is my test done so now what goes into my test runner I think we also we got a sample in in the site so so that we can do it quickly so we got a sample of our the one that we did last time so our sample runner class so so this is a sample runner class so and it's got the same package that we have and also it's got the same um, class test runner so if he hasn't got the same package name or the same runner on test runner name so you need to rename accordingly so from here you can see it's got the package runner and it's got the class as test runner so I can actually copy and paste and replace as it is so I'm going to just copy that so from what we've done previously not to waste any time so copy that and paste that so and also you have access to that website so you can just go and do as I am doing right now so that is that then the next one now that is done so we have the I've explained this before we have the features which is SRC test resources and resource and um, features so we need to create that path right now as it is so I go to SRC SRC test so then after that is resource so at this level I need to create a folder called resource new directory I'm going to call it resource this is as it is resources which uh, is the same as that one okay so so now I want to right click that and say make this directory a resources root so that changes the icon then the next one I want to create another directory to house my feature files so that is features okay cool so now the next one is my glue I want to create a glue to house my step definition so I can go into my test Java and at this level I can say okay I want to create a new package and that package is step depth so but if you call it step definition right you need to change this also to step definition so that's it but
but if you if you call it the same way I've done right now, so it remains the same thing. So now that is that done. So if you go to our site, you can see we've used all the files that were there. So we've done our test ng, we've updated the pom, and we've created the we've done the runner class. So and Okay, so I think that is that. So this is what is in this video anyway. So that, so we continue from there right now. So I can do a quick clean. There's one question, can we have more than one class inside our step definition package? Yes, you can You can have more than one class, I think. In normal situation, you should have more. Yeah, so I'll go through that in future. So you should have more than one, but yeah. So validate. So we've cleaned out, there's nothing, it, it, it's fine. So, and also I told you last time also, you could use your terminal to do your clean. So you can do something like maybe clean on your terminal. So maybe clean. Okay, I think I've installed this. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll leave this for now, to be honest. So we'll resolve that in future. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Let's use this. Okay, all right, cool. So now we need to create our step definitions uh, and also our feature files. So the first thing we want to do, we want to create our feature files. New, and you want to create a new file. You want to say, it's my login. Dot feature. So that is your login dot feature. So the next one is your feature. Again, you can put your step the uh, description of that particular test. This test. Then the next one you want to do is uh, your scenario. What's your scenario? So valid login. Then given I navigate to the side. Okay, cool. That that is that. Okay, so now that's 
our valid login case. So I'm not going to do more than that in this one. So you can as well increase that whenever you want to do that. So, but that is a valid um, login scenario. So the next one that we're going to do, we're going to create our step definition. So which we just need to get something to help us the, that particular um, bulb, it, it appears. So when you click on any undefined step, um, step, but also, as you can see, it says click or enter also, click or press or enter. So you can as well choose to uh, press or enter. So I'm going to click it and see what it gives to me. So it gives me steps to then create step definition. So I can do that. Then it asks me where to um, put the step definition. So um, I can, so I said you should use Java, not Java 8. So select Java. Then also, then you can go and select your step definition. So I want it to be saved inside that. So that is the path I want. Then I want the name to be login steps definitions. So I can, so then I can click OK. So that is saved in that particular um, uh, step devs, which are directory. And the one that we just created is the when clause. So if you go to your login page, uh, login steps, you see that the um, when clause is now kind of white, it's different from the other color. So that means we need to create the other colors, the other steps. So just right click on that, on click rather, click on that. Then this time around, because if you click on get create step definition again, it's going to create only the only that particular one that you are on. But we want to create everything, so we can say create all step definitions. So you can create all steps in the step definition. So you can create a new file, or you can use the one that you've created before. So we want to use the old one. So we just click on that. So that now you can see where they go everything mapped. So beware anywhere you have another uh, step uh, another scenario and you have this step giving and navigate to the site and it's actually written that way. So you don't need to generate that step again. It's automatically bound to that particular step for that particular for this one. So now let's comment every of the throw because it's going to be throwing uh, exceptions because we've not done anything and see that that works. So then that should pass. But this is not the best approach to be honest. But you it shouldn't do this anyway. But I just want to be sure that it's everything is working fine so that is that cleaned and then try to do my test Okay, from this right now, the next thing to do is our um, website. Do you want to log in to which site do you want to log into? So let's say you want to log into, um, let's say it's Keyfree that I want to log into. So you want to log into that. That's the first thing you do. So we just want to go through the manual step right now to see what we can do. So you want to log into that giftrich.com on, on that. So or maybe we should do the live one instead of that one. Okay. 
Okay. So then you want to click on login. So then after that, you want to write your email. Then you want to write your password. And you want to click on sign in. That's what we, the step involves. So we're going to go through it now using the code to do that. So one thing I went through last week is about find element and how to do that and also gecko. So now we're going to go through it once again. So now the first thing is to go to that site. So go to that site. So what you need to do as you've done manually is to fire on open your browser. So right now we're using Firefox. So we need to open Firefox. As you open Firefox, you need to add web driver. So I told you about yesterday that uh, last last week that there are different ways to do this, but I'm going to go through the easy approach so that then we go from there something that you'll be able to understand. So giving and navigate to, to the site. So I want to be able to do something here. So I want to navigate to that particular implementation. This is the implementation. So I can remove this code or maybe let me just leave it. So, so that doesn't confuse people because sometimes they remove what they don't need to remove. But right now, let's just leave it. I've commented it to above. And now I want to write my code in this place. So first thing I need to do, I need to in instantiate my web driver. So and I go to the beginning of the class. After I've got public class login step definition and I put web driver. So you can see that is that. So, and I call that driver. So that is me instantiating that particular driver now. So I can go to where my navigate is, which is this one. So giving a navigate to the site. And I can now say, what do I want to do? I want to navigate to the driver. So, and I want to navigate to that particular site. But before I could do that, I need to set my properties. So if you Google something out, I think I, I said this last week. So um, one thing that you need to do. You need to set your um, properties. So one minute, so let me quickly do that. Okay. So I'm going to Google for Gecko driver. So if you can see Gecko driver. Okay, I think there's even how to use Gecko driver and how to use that. So I'll click on that if you can see my screen. So that specify how you're going to do that. So scroll down. I can download my Gecko driver from there. So the first thing you need to do is download your Gecko driver. So I'm going to do that, download that. So, and at this point, you need to be careful, right, to know which version you're going to install. If you are Mac, if you are Windows, so this is for Mac. And if you're on Windows, you need to know whether you are 32 bit or 64 bit, depending on. So if you don't download the right one, so that you, your um, Firefox may not work. So you need to know which one you need to download. So I'm on 64 bit, so I will put 64. But you need to know which one, Windows or Mac, or if you're on Linux. So I'll download that one.
there's a question why do I need why do I so why do I I click on not login before I navigate okay I'll discuss that okay so I think you you're talking about this section right it doesn't matter the arrangement of this actually so these are different methods so what's going to happen what's more important is this so what's going to happen your uh, the compilers will go into a given and navigate and go into the and implement that particular method that is linked to that so it goes to that particular method which is this one so and also go it goes back again and say given i do that and implement that so then implement that one but what happened is because we started implementing this force that's why that one comes up so it doesn't matter the order so i think it should be fine so he goes he knows where to go to as long as your order is correct here. Yeah. Doesn't matter how the order is arranged in your step definition. Cool. Okay. So now let's go to that quickly. So I want to open that in WinZip. So quickly. So and then after that you need to download it yeah right. okay that's that yeah you need to download it and so i can copy or extract okay let's say i extracted to my download folder i think there's one already there before okay i'll just replace it anyway so then go to that that's that's what i'm looking for so what i'm going to do now to make it easier for people because i see people putting in different areas is now to create another at this point right now at my resource level i do something like create a new directory and i say create a new directory and i call it gecko driver so that's a new directory so and i want to place my gecko driver in that particular location so what i can do is copy that then paste it in this one so i want to paste so it's bringing that for me so you want to copy this file and you want to paste it in this location yes do that for me okay cool so now you have that so it's already copy at that particular location so what i'm going to do i've got a link here so i'll quickly just i'm running out of time right now i've got only a few minutes so what you need to do is set up your properties so quickly that is what you want to type in there so you want to set up your properties gecko driver Oh, sorry web driver dot gecko dot driver so you want to set your link which is src from src test resources and gecko driver and we now have our gecko driver so if you are having if you are using mac you don't need this exe if you are using mac you don't need the exe because for mac you don't have that you just need to put the gecko driver and that that should be fine so that's what you need to set up then after that you need to put driver 
dot. So the next one you want to navigate, right? So on, before you do that, actually, you want to open your web driver. So you want to you want to open your Firefox driver is equal to new Firefox driver. Okay. Then after that, you want to navigate driver dot get. So you want to put your right inside that you want to go to HTTP yes. Okay, that is that. That's what you want to do. Then the next one also, you want to go to the next level and you want to say um, click on login. So you want to click on login. So what you need to do now, go to that login screen, right click, inspect your element. So you have this, this is your element. So throughout, we want to make it easy. I'm going to be using uh, SPART for now so that I don't confuse uh, people. So I go to use SPART throughout today. <coughs> Excuse me. So copy s path so what you need to do right click copy s path so i've copied my s path go into my code i want to click on login okay so this is what i'll go into that step so at this step i want to say driver dot I want to find my element. I said, driver, please find element for me. How do you want to find it? Yes, my driver. I want to find it by S path. Okay, that is that. S path, which S path is it? Okay, I can paste that. Whoa, okay, that's not so good. Okay, for now, we're going to leave that. We're going to discuss this later. Or that's not a good S path. Is so so absolute. This is absolute um, absolute S path. So because you want to use a relative S path in your in your work, but I think because this is kind of introductory, so I'm going to still leave it like that. So for your absolute S path is one that start with HTML, starting from beginning. But it's not a good way to write your S path. You want to have a relative S path, which is referencing a particular. Um, elements on your site so but let's go ahead with this right now for today so then that you want to find my s path and this is the location of that particular element and then what you need to do to that element i want to click on that element so the click and that's that so that will click on the login so then the next one what is it going to enter username so I do that, I think, control, control, alt, b, you do that for me, but anyway. So this is now, I want to enter the username. So I go to the site, click on login. So on the login page, I want to enter username. Let's say, it's, you know, I think it's not username, it's email address anyway, but that's fine. Our username is the email address, so inspect that. So it's got an ID and it's got that. So let's copy the S path for that one also. Copy S path. Go to your site. Driver dot yes, Mr. Driver, what do you want? I want to find element. How do I want to find it? I want to find it by S path by dot s path okay what s path do i want to find the one i copied i'll paste it inside that is the s path so okay then after that what happens what do you want to do to the element i want to type inside the element 
Do you remember before one we the we clicked, but this time around we want to type because it's a text box. To type inside an element, you need to use send keys. Dot send keys. That's what I'm looking for. So dot send keys. So that is that. You can type it or you can click on it. Dot send keys. So yes. Now what exactly do you want to enter into that? So I want to enter test at gifrate.com. That's the email address that you want to send in. So that is that. The same thing applies to the password. You want to go to the site also and say, what is the um, element for the password? I want to inspect that element. So that is that highlighted. Another thing you need to also consider is like, if you move your mouse, if you move your mouse all around the DOM, you should be able to see the element highlighted. Then you know which one you're talking about. For instance, the email is that one highlighted and your password is that one highlighted. So you, then you know which one you are on. So, and I want to right click on that and say copy and copy S path. So I want to copy my S path, then I want to paste it. So driver dot, please find my element by what? By S path. So what do you want to find? I put in everything in quotes then I paste in there. Please beware of this slash because for instance, if I do something like this without putting my quote first, if I do, let's say, let me do that again just to be sh to show you something. So, okay, let me call Mr. Driver. Mr. Driver, yes I am. Find element for me, by what? By dot s path find it by s path then if i paste what i've copied you see that is what i've got then because it has to be in the code i i do like that so and then so you got issues with that because there's a code inside another code so because of that you need to escape it. I think that you need to escape it. That so that actually works. That's what you need to do. That makes this one to be a code. But if you don't know what where to put the escape and everything, then what you need to do to make your life easier is before you paste what you've copied, you put your code first. That's your code already. You put your Code, and then you can paste what you wanted to paste inside like that it does the escaping for you which is like it's putting that for you for instance this is what I copied this is what I copied and you can see this is what is pasting for me because he knows that there's a code inside that and for you to have a code he has to escape it so it's doing something like this for me automatically which is what is because then it's not making that code to be a code. It's not like it's another code inside a code. So you need you need to be to be aware. So you don't just paste it without in, inside the code. So you need to do that. So that is that I found my element and its password. It's already found. So what do you need to do to the element? You want to type. And I said if you want to type, you need to use send keys. Yes, someone asked, is this the same thing for C sharp? Yes, it is the same thing for C sharp. So, yeah. So, you need to use uh, escape also in C sharp if you copy anything with, uh, with code. So, so now I'm sending that. What am I sending? So, I'm sending my password. So, I'm putting that also in quotes. I think there's a question that came, what's this chart sequence? Do you need to worry? That's just 
telling you that what you want to write is a is a character sequence. So just like information, so you don't need to worry about that. And moreover, I didn't type it, so it's, that comes automatically. So now, what are you going to type in? You want to type your password. So let's say my password is password1. So that is that done. So the next one, I go into the login, into my login for um, features. We've done the username, we've done the password. Now I need to click on login. So control Alt and B. So now I need to click on the login. So So click on login. So this is what I mean, click on login. It's not actually click on login. It's click on secure um, signing. So I click, I right click on that, inspect the element. What exactly is it called? So that is that. So I want to use SPAT for that. Like I said, you can use different um, methods to find the element. But today, I just want to keep it simple because I got different discussion. So today we're going to use SPAT throughout and you can see that in some cases sometimes you, just, you can use SPAT. But we've seen the case that SPAT is not the best advice because we can see the one that we used at the top that is giving absolute SPAT. It's too long, it's starting from HTML. So we're going to discuss about that next week. So now what we are doing is now we want to click on the login. So, Mr. Driver, yes. So, Driver, yes. Find element for me. What am I finding? By what? By S path also. So, what is that I am finding? What's the S path? You can see that's another one. It's also going to the HTML. It's not, it's not that great. But today, we just leave with that. And then, what do we need to do? It's not thank key again. It's now click. You want to click on that. So click on click. And that's that. So what we've done right now should be able to do this for us. So if you run this that particular line of code, this is what it's going to do. It's going to go to this URL and it's going to click on login. And it's going to type test at gift with com and it's going to put that so that is what you should do and it's going to click on sign in that should bring that to you so but because it's not a valid login so you want to confirm because if it's not valid you get this error message so the next level is to confirm that you don't get this error message because if it's valid, you won't get this. So you can validate that this particular message is not displayed. That's the next level to see that that is not found. So I think for, for today, we might stop here so that we continue from the assertion because this is going to be another level so at this point we, want, we will do some assertion so but for now I, I want everyone to lay their hands upon this to be able to do that from end to end so and also watch the video so it's going to be a very quick video uh, like half an hour so with what we've done so and then if you can use other part on um, s part or um, id or classes for to find your element that will be brilliant so yeah so if you can do that that is good so this is just a short one just to get you started with the basics. But we basically we are using only SPOT for now. And you should get your Gecko driver everything set up by going through this. So then if you want to test, you just click on that and that should um, get you started.